Well, fascinating is a word I use for the <laughs> unexpected. Fascinating. 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 Yeah. Leonard Nimoy, of course, in the uh, iconic role of Spock, Mr. Spock, in the old Star Trek series. Star Trek, by the way, uh, this week just turned 50 years old, believe it or not. Rich Michelson is with us from R. Michelson Galleries in Northampton. You got a new book out about Leonard Nimoy, your longtime friend. I do. And surprisingly, it is called Fascinating. <laughs> How about uh, the that? Life of Leonard Nimoy. How did we come up with that? <laughs> the last time you and I spoke about Leonard Nimoy was from California at his funeral. At his funeral. Uh, I was blessed to be a good friend. Uh, Leonard and I emailed literally every day for the last 10 years of his life. Obviously, the question I get asked more than anything on the <laughs> road is, are you Leonard Nimoy's son? Right. We're on radio here, but there is a <laughs> bit of a resemblance. A bit, I would um, say. Yeah. Um, and over the years, Leonard did become much like a father to me. Sunny disposition, laughed <laughs> more than anyone I knew. <laughs> he was interested in all things. A true renaissance man. Denise and I talk about movie stars in general. God, you hope they're like that in real life. <laughs> is Leonard, you know, what you see is what you get? Most people, of course, know him through Spock. The book that I'm here uh, flogging is, um, <laughs> is about his childhood. Mm -hmm. It starts with him as an eight-year-old boy in Temple when he first sees an old Hebraic prayer, which he made world famous as the Vulcan hand salute. Live long and prosper. That came from his youth. The point is that he brought much of his youth into the characterization of Spock. But you don't see the full Leonard, uh, of mm -hmm. course, of Spock. Uh, Leonard laughed a lot. The son, we used to say, followed him wherever he went. Mm. We can't deny that. When you first met, you met in a gallery, didn't you? Uh, we, I think we actually met first uh, at the National Yiddish Book Center in Amherst. And one of the books that he was asked to record is an earlier children's book of mine called Too Young for Yiddish. Actually, we have audio here of Leonard Nimoy talking about that very book. It was a lovely book. Uh, Rich Michelson, the author, is a very good friend of mine. He also happens to operate a very good gallery, uh, an art gallery in Northampton, Massachusetts, where he shows my work. He's an, an award-winning poet and writer. I admire his writing, I admire his work, and I was moved by, by, by the content of that book. I think it's a very good one, and I was very flattered and honored to be asked to, to do the voice. When uh, you guys first met, was he astounded that you looked like you could be his son? <laughs> was that his first? Because uh, everybody says that when the two of you are together. Yeah, we both talked about it right off. Actually, one of the high points of my life is when mm. uh, Leonard and I were eating dinner once. People were always coming up to him. He was always very generous with mm. his time. One particular occasion, somebody ran up to the table and walked right past Leonard and said, are you Rich Michelson? <laughs> said, yes. They said, oh, I love your books. And as they turned to go, they pointed to Leonard and said, is that your dad? Oh and, my and I said, God. yeah, that's my dad. And they turned to Leonard and they said, you must be so proud of your boy. <laughs> and uh, we, that, that oh, was great. Man. I told Leonard, I said, hang around with me long enough. People will start to recognize you as well. You know, as I talk about in Fascinating, uh, Leonard grew up in a Yiddish-speaking home, kosher home, three sets of dishes. His parents were immigrants. Um, they came from Zaslav, Ukraine, escaping pogroms. His mother was smuggled out in a hay cart. His father walked for days to cross the border. And Leonard grew up very much aware of that history. Their passports uh, were stamped alien. Their passports uh, uh. were stamped alien. When he was offered the role, and I said, he was a little worried. Would he become a laughing stock, you know, <laughs> with funny ears right. and a funny haircut? He did. He reached back into his memory, mm. and he told uh, Mr. Roddenberry. The late Gene, Gene Roddenberry. Roddenberry. He said, you know, my parents came to this country as aliens. Uh, I was born as a citizen, and it's time for me to complete the circle and become an alien. <laughs> That outsider status that Spock had really spoke mm. to him very much. Nimoy died last year at the age of uh, 83. You know, I've, I've told you this before. Um, if I watch TV generally, I'm going to watch the old stuff. I watch right. westerns mostly. And you'll see Leonard Nimoy every couple of weeks. You'll see him in some western. Played a lot of Indians. He played a lot of Indians. Bank robbers with a conscience. It always astounded me with 50s and 60s TV is that these guys, Shatner uh, among them, they're doing three and four roles a week. So they're going from soundstage to soundstage to soundstage. You must have talked about this. How do you remember what character you are and what costume you're supposed to be in as you go from set to set? Leonard had a reputation. He showed up on time, knew his lines, you know, and he always tried to get inside 
the character he was playing. Exactly. No, no matter how small the part was, this comes very much from his early life. The book talks a little bit about, started with photography. We'll get to the current show I'm having now at the gallery. Which, but, which uh, show begins on Friday night. It begins in, in on fact, Friday. It, we will be showing 50 previously unseen photographs that Leonard took. Uh, Leonard was a photographer throughout his life. He considered that, in many ways, uh, what he was. When he was 13, he bought his first camera. If you come to the gallery, you'll mm -hmm. actually see the camera. He built his own dark room in the family bathroom, which didn't exactly thrill the rest of the family. <laughs> there were three generations of Nimoy's uh, mm -hmm. living in a tiny apartment. Uh, you know, after Star Trek went off the air after three seasons, uh, before it became the mega hit that it <laughs> did later on, uh, a lot of people don't know that Leonard actually uh, thought about quitting acting uh, and becoming a professional photographer. He went back to school at UCLA. Uh, he studied with Robert Heineken. Um, but then that whole kind of swell started taking over his <laughs> life. Yeah, and that whole lie that the uh, the show itself wasn't a hit, and that kind yeah. of proved the lie of the Nielsen ratings. Yeah, be yeah. Because uh, it was ranked way, way down, like 100th or something on the show's. And then it turned out that everybody was watching it. And so then it was canceled. It was like almost a revolution. Yeah. And then they had to make all the movies. So, And yet they persist with the Nielsen ratings somehow. I know that you've had so much inspiration from Leonard Nimoy, uh, Rich Michelson. But, but how did you get the idea to do this children's book? It's funny because I've written so many uh, children's books, um, and as well as biographies about well-known figures, um, people who kind of I felt should be in the canon who were passed by. Lippmann Pike, I the baseball player, Lippmann comes Pike, to mind. Yeah. the uh, first uh, uh, home run king uh, who has been very unfairly left out of the record books. Mm -hmm. And if you Google Lippmann Pike um, petition, you will see my online petition to get him into Cooperstown Hall of Fame, where I spoke um, about him for an hour and spent my time castigating the people who had invited me to speak. Ah. A couple of years ago, Adam Nimoy, his actual son. Does he look like him? He does as well. <laughs> Adam and I have become good friends. Most people assume we're brothers. He decided to do a documentary called uh, Leonard Nimoy's Boston. And I saw some of the uh, cuts that he was doing. And I said, you know, hmm. this has been in front of my eyes the entire time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody knows Leonard's childhood as, as well as I do. It's a story about remembering who you are and where you came from. But I finished it 2014 on Thanksgiving morning, sent <laughs> it to Leonard, who emailed me back immediately, as he often did. <laughs> it's wonderful. Thank you for doing this. When he was eight years old on stage at the Settlement House in Boston, which was a place where immigrants went to learn how to be American. Uh, how to brush your teeth with a toothbrush instead of a rag and things like that. The Leonard went on stage to sing God Bless America when he was eight years old. And I knew he was ill. I knew suffering with COPD. I had no idea that he would pass away just three months later. There was even talk and of the two of you touring together. That was the very last conversation I ever had with Leonard. It tells me that I need to follow my own advice from now on to mm. sit down and write it as soon as you're thinking about it. Don't wait. Uh, Leonard was in the hospital. The last thing I said to him was, was I had sold the book by this point. You have to get better. We've got a big book tour going on. Mm -hmm. Last words to me were, don't worry, Rich, I'll be there with you. Yeah. Leonard is with me. Not the way I had hoped, <laughs> um, but his spirit is with me wherever I go. We're talking about the new children's book, the illustrated book, uh, Fascinating, by Richard Michelson, illustrations by Ella Rodriguez. This exhibit of Nimoy's work, mm -hmm. that's going to be all through October. That'll be all through October. Yeah. You know, we've done many shows of Leonard's work. We did the Full Body Project. At the Full Body mm -hmm. Project, I think, is exactly what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Him as a conceptual photographer. Mm -hmm. Secret Selves, which was the last full show we did, was based went on a Greek myth that he had read about uh, humans used to have four arms, four legs, and two heads. We got too powerful, and <laughs> Zeus came and with a thunderbolt and split us all in two. And so we go around our lives searching for our other halves. Ooh. Um, you know, it's why we're always looking for something else. It's why mm -hmm. we're unhappy. He was reaching the end of his life. He closed his dark room. This, as the COPD got worse, uh, he didn't want to be working with the chemicals. We had every contact sheet that he had taken from, he was 13 till almost 80. And we went through it to find the gems we had missed. His wife, Susan, went through and chose in honor of the 50th anniversary of Star Trek, uh, her 50 
favorites from among the many that we were narrowing down. And that's what we're showing at the gallery. We're talking to Rich Michelson, who just has finished his new book, and the uh, publication party will be at the gallery, the R. Michelson Gallery, right on Main Street in Northampton. That's Friday night from 6 to 8, runs all through the month of October to October 25th. Uh, Zachary Quinto, who plays Spock in the latest editions of, of Star Trek, mm-hmm. actually has a blurb. Zach Quinto, who I got to know, uh, Leonard and Zach were very close. Mm. Uh, when he was offered the part, uh, Leonard reached out to him, mm-hmm. made him feel welcome, and got rid of that uh, that nervousness of taking over an iconic role. Were you ever considered for the part yourself? Uh, was I ever considered? Well, you know, I did tell Leonard that I in the, in the first movie where they find him stranded, that I had hoped he'd be wearing an R. Michelson Galleries t shirt <laughs> right. at the time. I could have used a PR. <laughs> Uh, I got enough to do, um, <laughs> but Zach is wonderful. Uh, you know, I've seen him a few times at Leonard's house. He, Before we go, the the gesture that he did gesture, with the yep. the fingers that is a Hebraic symbol that no one knew until they read your book. Fascinating here. Can you do it? I'm really bad at it, actually. The way this came to be is on the second season of Star Trek, there was a show where it was the first time we were visiting Vulcan, the first time it would be seen. The script called for Leonard to meet the Vulcan Queen, for Spock to meet the Vulcan Queen. (laughs) When it was being filmed, Leonard said, that's not right. You know, there should be a special greeting. Uh, military men salute, Asians bow, Vulcan should do something different. Uh, But he hadn't thought ahead. Leonard didn't have something at the ready. Suddenly what came into his mind was this gesture that he had seen in Temple way back when he was eight years old. It had fascinated him as a child. Uh, it was It's a prayer that's given when the feminine manifestation of God enters the temple. Um, you're told to look away. Leonard was an eight-year-old boy. He <laughs> peeked through his fingers. He saw it, went home that night and practiced. He taped his fingers together. And so this came back into his mind, and he held up his hands in that gesture. What he didn't count on was the fact that he had been doing this since he was 13, and the, uh, <laughs> the rest of the cast and the Vulcans uh, did not have that gesture down so easily, so they had to go back and tape (laughs) their fingers. He knew immediately that it was a hit. As soon as that show aired, that day he was walking down the street in Los Angeles and people started holding up their hands and saying, live long and proud. Is that right? gesture poured on immediately. Mm. And it brought him great pleasure in his life because he always said, and it's something he continued to do, because people were holding up their hands. Most didn't realize that what they were doing was blessing each other. They were blessing him. They were blessing their friends. And he had great joy the fact that people, wherever he went, walked around and blessed each other. As they say, fascinating. By the long way, and prosper. When you say fascinating, can you arch your eyebrow like Leonard did? Well, <laughs> we'll say I'm doing it perfectly. It's on radio. <laughs> Nobody will know. Beautifully done. Rich, aside from the opening and all that at the gallery, what's the best way for people to get this book? Certainly, I'm going to plug your local bookstores, Broadside, Odyssey, Amherst Books. If you want signed and personalized copies, you can come to R. Michelson Gallery. Uh, Friday night, I will be signing copies from 6 to 8. Uh, if you insist, you can go online um, <laughs> at the uh, uh, big bookstores. I was pleased to see that we were the number one title on Amazon this morning for mm. new books. It's around. Please get it. Pick it up. It's called Fascinating, The Life of Leonard Nimoy. You'll learn something. Beautiful illustrations by Edel Rodriguez. I hope you enjoy the book. Beautiful.